2E by Brian Fred Worm McGregor 2020-2021 At first they were drawing crowds, they later drew other crowds. This story is a product of pure fiction and did not occur at any point for anyone ever. The storyline has an adult theme throughout, despite some of the characters being younger is so to speak. Please think over any decision to continue reading as it must be your own decision. No parts, whole or otherwise, are to be copied, duplicated, transmitted and or reproduced in any way, fashion, manner, type or design without a said consultation then written permission from the said sole author, namely myself, Brian Fredworm McGregor. This book was written between late 2020 and early 2021. Copyright 2020-2021, Brian Fredworm McGregor. It was early winter, as autumn had finished pretty much. Every leaf had fallen, every branch bare. The clouds were grey, and the sun was cold. This was after mum and dad's divorce, and we had to move into a smaller, much smaller apartment, away from our old house, which was massive. Mum and dad were toast, the partnership was done, as was ours. Nobody got on with nobody at all, and I myself had additional needs, for the want of better words, although at the time nobody really knew, so to speak. Well anyway, this new apartment was in a block with stairs, and the only good thing about it was it had tall walls and tall windows, and that's about it. Plenty of room for my posters, which I liked, and Plenty of room to stay outside. I had a thing for art, not that I could draw as I couldn't draw at all. At any rate, one night I had a migraine as per usual, which was common with the stress of moving and the stress of dad who stressed he wouldn't be back. Good, I said to mum. Mum, well, she usually gives me some medication which I took for my brain pain, we often joked. Anyway, it was midnight and mum was zonked in bed, out cold like a drunk, although she was sober and didn't drink like at all. So in a moment, even young, I nipped into that kitchen and took one of my tablets. I knew what I was doing, I mean, I was ten, I was big. My head was pounding and it was like I had went ten rounds with a semi-decent middleweight boxer. So I took a tablet, well, okay, I took a few, and as I look back, it wasn't one of my better ideas, or better yet, a good idea at all. Okay, it was a bad idea at the time, and it still is. So I took the tablets and had some cola, as I always did. Well, okay, I was meant to take water. Anyway, the tablets hit me like nothing before, and as I wandered through to bed, I felt ill, like ill. But I hoped it would pass, like, quickly. Once I got into bed, well, I conked out quickly and then woke up being sick. With what felt like many hours later. Well, it felt that way to be honest. At this point I conked out again, and not in a good way. The next thing I remember, I woke up in the hospital with doctors around me, with mum. Looking worried, my first words were, What are you doing in the hospital, Mum? She sighed and smiled, then realised I would be okay at that point. I've always had a sense of humour, a cheeky one like that. But I was actually serious as such, if you know what I mean. I spent a few days in hospital, and funnily enough, I never had another migraine after then. However, I changed, Mum said, as I had a small stroke or something like that. However, my brain pain never came back. It turns out 
had a blood clot and the fall out of bed onto a solid concrete floor didn't help much or at all. Well, Mum, she couldn't work. She had to look after myself during recovery, which took a while, the doctor said, up to six months. As these blood clot thingies are serious, apparently, and not everyone recovers everything, like talking, walking and so on. Mum said, I could walk and talk fine, but I had tantrums, so to speak. I ripped down all my posters like, and the place was in a mess, just like Mum's room. I chuckled, except it wasn't shoes, rather posters and stuff. All just paper, I would say. At any rate, Mum came into the room and said, Halsey, what are you doing? I replied quickly, I'm away to the pub. And sat down quickly in a heap. Mum just smirked and then walked out saying, Yeah, 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 you are fine. I was closing the door to the bedroom slowly. <laughs> I added, I was turning to face the closed bedroom door. Yeah, worked for Dad. As it turns out, it works for myself too. Anyway, it was late at night then, and yes, yet again, another tantrum. At this point, I broke one of my crayons out of sheer nastiness, and nothing else. But, but wait, I even scribbled on my bare, posterless wall. Just for a laugh. I knew Mum would like that, but well, okay, she wouldn't. I walked over to the tall windows to get a better gander at my masterpiece. Hmm, I added. It needs some shading and a little bit of a better artist too. No, but wait, we'll win some subject matter too. And the whilst the scribbles were fine, I knew they would not get me into a museum at all with dodgy skills like mine. But wait, what can I draw? I sat and stared out the window in the huff in the huff into the rainy night. The outside was brightly lit, even within the dark night and the rain. Well, it was raining very heavily on this heavily used thoroughfare. So I thought, what to draw? What to draw I added while I was tapping my one inch crayon. This one inch crayon is almost six inches less than two minutes ago. So at 11, I came up with a master plan, not a masterpiece at that point, and decided to draw real life. I mean, it's all there. It's a big street. I've got a big wall, and according to my mum, I've got big dreams, as big as my mouth. I thought to myself, my dreams must be massive if my mouth is used as a comparison. At that point, I chuckled somewhat, albeit quietly, as I didn't want snaffled by my mum playing silliness at around midnight or the about. My clock got it as well this night. It was bounced off the wall. It seemed okay but it tick-tocked away all wonky and apparently in the meantime 50 years had passed but only 3 minutes. I just sighed and sighed a little more. I was tempted to put it out of its misery and bounce it off the wall and finish it off but I knew fine well it wouldn't bounce properly. This meant that the earlier experiment was a complete failure and there was no need for a rerun of Project Bouncy, not so bouncy clock. I didn't like the clock anyway. That worked better. I walked back over to the wall and started drawing what I remembered, which was pretty much everything, and I'm not sure exactly why. I mean, I had a condition in my head and I wasn't or rather shouldn't have been able to do such feats, but I did. So I started drawing the crowds outside, which were yapping, yeah, yap, 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 all night. They were screaming too, which pretty much went unnoticed as it was commonplace in the street for shouting and the like. Anyway, I drew a few people who were in quite a heated disagreement. Oh, I thought to myself, there's buildings too, I better add them too. And without looking too much, I drew them. I knew I had to go to bed soon as a care worker was coming in the morning to supervise my well-being and recovery. I wasn't bothered too much, so I continued regardless, yeah, pretty much regardless. I managed quite a bit, well, I was or had a thing for detail which included both buildings and people. In fact, 
even at that point the wall had so much crayon, it might just keel over. As it turns out, I did a little more than rest my head down. Somewhat to gaze at my genius, the next thing I heard was, Okay little miss, what do you call this? I was a cheeky little imp and snapped. It's buildings and people or can't you tell? My mum was not impressed. So I got my shower, changed my clothes and waited on the care worker with mum's face tripping her up the full time. She must have been glad to be sitting at that point. To add insult to injury, I asked mum why she was so cheerful, but she took as not being funny at all, adding again, you miss are going to your bedroom after our visitor. I added, yeah, I know, I was going there anyway, so ain't much change there, mum. She smiled, half-heartedly, knowing fine well, I didn't give a monkeys. At any rate, mum bought me the same clock again, so I wanted to make sure the early experiment from last night was wholly fire. Hence, I wanted back into my bedroom. Mum had an annoying habit of buying like two or three of the same thing, something like bulk buying, she said a few months back. At the time I asked her why, if this was the case, why didn't she buy those tasty ice creams? In packs of two or three that I liked. I got the usual ceiling stair routine with the ever-folded arms routine mixed in for good measure. I just smiled. I was actually happy. Mum didn't smile. She wasn't actually happy. This of course made me happy too. This of course didn't make Mum smile at all, as she knew. She often said, I just needed some bananas and hey presto, I was the complete cheeky monkey. I just started smiling, grinning almost at which point the door was knocked. Uh oh, I added, it's a social. Mum adds, best behaviour or it's your room later all night, as in all night night. I reply, yeah, yeah, whilst dropping my hand. I could think of worse things to endure, like Mum's cooking. She did have great intentions, but her pots and pans looked like coal was brewed in them, like all the time, really. Hey, 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 here we go, I added as she walked in. She walked in slowly and introduced herself professionally. It was the same every single week. We all talked and tried to be nice, which mum reminded me of. Be nice Halsley. To which I replied, what again? In the same day? Before slumping back in the seat. They both talked with me, gently, staring at the ceiling just like mum always did when she was annoyed. At this point all three of us went into my bedroom, which to be fair had seen better days or weeks or perhaps altogether since we both moved in. It looked like a garage sale had happened during a gale and everything was just put together again in a hurry during that same gale or by someone heavily drunk. It's not that I rolled my eyes when they both told me to clean up. I didn't mind as I knew that was coming. They pointed to my creativity on the wall which honestly looked brilliant now I looked at it. Whereas before, I was probably a little hard on myself, a harsh critic with high standards, one was known to say about things I did well. They both said it looked great. Well, I was chuffed, and the carer encouraged me to continue, which mum was clearly chuffed about. Yeah, ceiling and crossed arms again. The carer never saw this, and smiled when she turned to face my mum who also smelled very unconvincingly, if I'm wholly, wholly honest. They both finished up discussing money, and if we both had enough of everything to get by on. Mum said life was tough, but to be fair, she just fancies buying more shoes, although she, we really didn't go out at all. And for a while, both of us really didn't mind. They both said their goodbyes and I played my part, waving and blowing cute kisses to the social carer. At this point mum closed the door then came back to me and said, seeing how you were good or thereabouts, you can stay with me in the dining area and watch television. I added, can't I just be punished? I was looking forward to that, to which I was sent to my bedroom. Ha ha, my cunning plan worked. I went back to drawing and drawing I did. I didn't really have any pals and no schooling to speak of 
know about. Not much of anything, to be fair. These were the times before the internet sensation took hold as such, you see. Mum didn't work, as I said, either. She looked after me and kept the house clean while trying to decorate the best she could, which wasn't the best. So I kept on drawing away the outside, as I remembered it last night, which was pretty accurate. Well, I think so, right? Screaming, fighting, and heated voices. Dinner came and went, and the drawing continued on a tight schedule. I told myself while chuckling somewhat. I didn't even think of bouncing the clock off the wall. All night, funny that, I must be happy. I then thought Mum needs a clock like mine. I was chuckling a little under my breath. The room hadn't been tidied at all. There was more chance of Mum bringing me one of those nice ice creams, which wasn't going to happen. Mum would look in now and then, adding, That's coming on great! Without even looking. I just rolled my eyes and got back to the art stuff thing. It got dark early, so the drawing got into full swing again, so to speak. The street outside was now dark, and it suited me just perfect, which was great in that I could see what I was drawing exactly. Rain, clouds, and oh, the yappers too. Yap, 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 they went. The dogs didn't help and between them, it sounded like a TV show was on the outside. It certainly felt that way, with the entertaining language too, or rather lack of use. They seemed to be happy though, between the loud banging going off now and then. That was when the dogs barked even louder. The months flew past and in this time I recovered pretty much, although I was never the same. I had one interest which was drawing and nothing else mattered. The social care came and went, admired my art, then wandered off. I was glad of that, the wandering off part, as I liked being alone. Then one day she came in with an expert who looked at the ever-increasing complexity and intricity of my drawing, which impressed her. She asked, when did you start? Well, as per usual, smart remark came out initially. I added, at the beginning. She was amused, unlike everyone else. I actually think she understood, well, somewhat. Although I didn't think that at the time, wholly anyway. I soon did when I went to a gifted kids school, which only asked the students to do art, and art only, which suited me. I amazed everyone, which was good in that I was top in the class of a class of top kids. Mum got a job and would pick me up most days from there. They even had a drop-in thingy. I dropped in, needless to say. I dropped in a lot. Every day, even Sundays, the bus passed the school, which was handy, and eventually I went there myself, aged 13. The school wasn't just for children but for adults too, and I knew one day I would swap between. I would draw piece after piece, and the newspapers would come and look and photograph. And I wasn't too cheeky by then, as I certainly had calmed down pretty much, or I will say. In any case, Many years passed. And my favourite thing was then to draw crowds. I flaming hated them too at the same time, as were hard to draw, as the subject would be gone from view, or at least in a new position, in a few moments. But it helped better my memory. I couldn't count too well, and well, I wasn't good at many things, but I could draw, I could draw very convincingly, very convincingly at that. Albeit crowds, which as mentioned, were my favourite of all. It's strange how things work out, it's said in life, but little did I know at the time, everything I disliked about crowds would come to call and be my all. Furthering this, I learned how to write poetry and philosophy, which were added to my creativity at school, albeit I was in the adult group now. I had been for a good few years at that. The crowds came and saw my great works, which I drew in crayon on massive sheets of paper at my mum's place, which I either took to the school or had viewed at there in my home. So as you've guessed, even with mum's passing, I never moved from their flat with the tall windows and walls, and it wasn't like it was small at all, as it had real size, I was often told. Years later, 
yet still in that house with which I had lived with my mother. A few officers then appeared at the front door and asked me to think back many years as I had been there in this house a long time after all. And if I had saw anything, at which point they gave me a little information on an alleged crime. In any case, I chose to invite them in as it was cold outside and all three of us walked into the now old spare room as I needed to close the window there as it was chilly when they joined me and in doing so they noticed the wall. They immediately looked at one another before asking, when was this glorious streetscape painted? They looked at each other kind of knowingly. I said, oh, I was very young then and just painted what I saw rather accurately, although I have never got around to papering over it, as it was fond memories with that part of my life, and whilst they were not perfect as I would want, there were still memories as such, with mom, as I was once living in this room, as mentioned at an early age. One made note of the wall, and the other added, it's remarkably accurate, even with clothing and faces. I replied, yes. I like detail and lots of it at that. At that point, the officers asked me, So, 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 do you recall when you painted this part here and here and there too? I was tapping on some well-drawn painted faces with great accuracy. Yes, it was a Tuesday when I was 11 and I gave them the date and time exactly as I recalled it as such, to which they then photographed the wall very close up at that. At first I thought I was going to appear in the local or national paper, I was quite excited, as this had happened before. They both then said to myself at roughly the same time, to say nothing of us, the three officers being here, and not to mention the wall, rather mysteriously to anyone at all. My first thought then was a full spread in a national newspaper, which thrilled me, then at that point rather abruptly. It was then, the next day, that while I was passing a newsstand, I noticed my wall. Yes, mine, yes, mine, with questions, asking if anyone knew these men and women, who they were, as apparently I had drawn an incident where someone had got hurt bad, or at least the culprits, or those which were there, and I had captured them in crayon as such. Later that day I was moved as anyone who was remotely clever would be able to figure out where it came from by angle and height and so on. The officers returned and I was moved to a new apartment which I guess made me sad somewhat but it was for the best for the situation. At any rate, as it turned out, it was really for the best as those involved were identified from my wall creations on my old bedroom wall which was good as someone had passed away from their injuries. On that night, it turned out, hence the dogs barking loudly, yet also the heated debate on the street as such. As it turned out, the alleged suspects were all unknowns till now, or rather when the picture of my bedroom was pictured in the papers once again, being that it had been published years before when I drew it. After a number of weeks, all those involved were caught. Finally, thanks to public appeal, withdrawn footage of that fateful night captured in crayon as such. I eventually testified against those involved in that case and then was placed in a protection scheme, although I never drew again, as it would have exposed who I truly was, simply because of the techniques and design I used, which were very obvious and well known as such. I don't draw crowds anymore, although I owe thanks to that one drawing now now that I'm never overdrawn. And so all my works were placed in that museum, you know, the one I would never get into ever as an ever. They were all placed in hallway to east, or as it's known within the museum, hall to e. Hall to e. This book was a Fred Worm production, 2020-2021, copyright 2020-2021, Brian Fred Worm McGregor.
www.fredonequartsofficial.co.uk I hope you enjoyed it.